So it was the summer of 2004. I had just moved to Alaska from Texas, and I was really excited about coming up here because my entire life, my mom would always tell me how Alaska was the most beautiful place on earth, how everyone who lived here was so nice, and it was my home. So when I arrived in Fairbanks, Alaska from Texas, I literally had a Bob Ross painting in my head. I thought there was gonna be mountains everywhere, birds chirping, and happy little trees. But the truth is, is I was terrified of the ravens. I was extremely sad that there was hills instead of mountains, and it wasn't anything like I had pictured in my head. So when I got to my grandfather's house, I immediately called my dad and I wanted to get on the next plane out of there. And it was during that conversation that my little sister, Holly, who was 13 at the time, stopped me from talking and she said, Emily, you cannot leave me here. So I, I decided to stay, uh, but under one condition, I was gonna enroll in school, thinking that maybe this place might grow on me. So I enrolled in at, at UAF, and the truth is, is it was a rocky beginning mainly because I was back at square one. See, growing up in Texas, the one question that everyone would ask me is, Emily, what are you? I mean, I have dark hair. I lived in a predominantly Spanish-speaking area. I love Selena. I was even part of a folklorico group. <laughs> so here I am in Fairbanks, Alaska, being asked the same question, Emily, what are you? And I would tell them, I'm Alaska Native. The first time my mom told me I was Alaska Native, I was nine years old, and I remember this conversation because she was wearing beautiful purple and black beaded earrings. And although she couldn't answer the questions that I had about being Native, I remember instantly being drawn to these earrings. So when people would ask me in Fairbanks, Alaska, Emily, what are you? I would say, I'm Alaska Native. And then they would say, well, what type of Native are you? And I would look at them and I'm like, a smart Native? <laughs> A pretty native? I don't know. And then they would ask me, well, who are your grandparents? And I'm like, why do they want to know what my family, like, why are they asking me who my family is? But I had no idea. So one night, everything really started changing. It was actually September 7th, 2004, and I remember this date because it was Jacob Tyrell's birthday. And I had gone to a birthday party um, and once again, I was the only girl in heels in a room full of hoodies, and I was about to leave, and I heard a laugh. I heard a laugh that filled the room, and I looked over, and I saw a boy with the most beautiful blue eyes I'd ever seen in my life. And I, I remember being drawn to him the way that I was drawn to my mom's earrings, and I told him a little lie. I told him I loved video games, and it worked. From that moment on, we were inseparable. We dated for about a year, and then we found out we were pregnant. We actually found out we were pregnant inside Fred Meyer, ironically. I had, um, I had just picked him up on my lunch break, and I started feeling sick. And I told him, go to Starbucks, you know the coffee that I like, just to keep him busy. And I ran over the pregnancy aisle, I got the test, I checked out, I went to the bathroom, I found out I was pregnant, and I literally started bawling inside the bathroom at Fred Meyer. So I'm walking back into the store, and Jacob at the time, he said, Emily, stop crying, I got you the wrong coffee. And I said, I'm pregnant, you idiot. <laughs> and he had the biggest smile on his face. In the time frame, about three weeks, um, and uh, unfortunately, my mom's alcoholism got progressively worse. So in three weeks, we found out we were pregnant. We took my little sister, who was 15 at the time, away from my mom. And we moved into a bigger place. And by bigger, I mean two-bedroom apartment in Fairbanks. And Jake picked up a second job. It was the first time in my life that I had really experienced unconditional love like that. On December 14th, 2005, Jacob and I were married, and exactly two months later, we welcomed our beautiful little girl in this world on Valentine's Day, Anya Tyrell. Although we were kids raising kids, we had so much love within our household. Jake was the type of parent that would rush home from his lunch break just to hold Anya for five minutes. He was also the type of parent that would come with a list of questions ready to grill Holly's teachers. It was really... It was really a remarkable time in my life because for the first time, I really felt like I had a home. But all that changed on June 29th, 2007, when Jacob was killed in a motorcycle accident along the Steve's Highway.
our daughter was 14 months old, my sister was 15, and I was 23. The day that we cremated Jake, I decided to read him a letter I had written. And in my letter, I had told him how much I loved him and how much I appreciated his encouragement to find my native roots and how I loved that he loved my sister and, my, and our daughter unconditionally. And I remember putting the letter in between his cold hands and I kissed his face and I said goodbye. But as hard as it was bearing Jake, the hardest thing I've ever had to do is to console our daughter. When Anya was three, you would think that she would wish for like a Disney vacation or some silly toy. But when I brought her her cake and I said, make a wish, baby, she said, mommy, I wish that you don't die. It took everything inside me not to hate God. And at the same time, it took everything inside inside of me not to take my own life. There were days when my sister and my daughter would literally have to pull me out of bed just to get up and go to work or to school. At the time, my dad saw that I was struggling and he offered me a way out. He said, come back home to Texas. But I knew that Jake and I wanted a life for our girls and I decided to stay. And thank God I decided to stay because despite the loss of my husband, I'm not lost anymore, because if someone were to ask me today who I was, I would tell them that I'm Emily Tyrell. I'm Yupik Ananupiak from Mimonic, Alaska. I'm the granddaughter of John and Cecilia Sipri and the great-granddaughter of Pearlene Axel Johnson. I work for an incredible organization that's doing amazing things in the Native community. But what's most important and what it means to me is this. The way my mom's earrings were so special to me, this bracelet is special to me because it was the first time my daughter and I weaved together at the Elders and Youth Conference. Alaska has been able to give me a home, a sense of community, a sense of belonging. Guyana, 